no wakes up in the morning. You wake up in the morning and Gerald is already awake. He's sitting at his computer and he looks like he hasn't slept. But yeah, he's just kind of sitting there at his computer, screwing around on Facebook. I would have made a sprite to make him look more tired, but I, I really don't know how to do that with this this guy. So uh, just imagine he's got bags under his eyes. So you ask him if he's okay and if he wants some coffee. He says, well, um, I woke up pretty early this morning and uh, I kind of took inspiration from what you were saying last night and uh, I uh, I decided I'd go ahead and set up a dead man switch uh, for Christopher and I uh, to wake me up so that way I'd know what was going on. Um, I don't think it failed. I woke up very early this morning and uh, I just haven't been able to go back to sleep since. It seems like that method works. I only remember who Christopher is because of the notes that I have for myself, but I don't actually remember who they are. I don't know how we're going to do this again. No. I think we're going to have to have some sort of plan for this next... time. Do you know if anyone else is taken before your uh, time loop starts? Perhaps we could do something this time. Perhaps we could do something to stop this from happening to someone else. We don't know who else is getting disappeared in the meantime, but at least we could do something about the ones we know. I... I have a plan, but I need to, to get it verified uh, without having any of uh, my friends around. We won't have anyone else to bounce this off of aside from Kevin. So I'm going to have to... Um, I'm going to have to make amends. Um, he seems to be the right man for this job. You mentioned uh, Christopher from the hotel, not to be confirmed or um, confused with Christopher um, Crystal's boyfriend. Okay. Do you have a general idea of when Christopher, the motel owner, goes missing? Tomorrow afternoon. So you tell him that. Okay. We have some time to set this up, which means that I've got some time to work this plan out with Kevin. Hopefully, Kevin will be receptive and won't be too angry. Um, I'm going to need you to do some work for me today. I'm going to be busy talking to Kevin and making sure that we're okay. But in the meantime, I need you to do some things. Um, first, I need you to spend some time uh, checking up and making sure that... Christopher is still around. I need you to check uh, twice today, probably. Um, I also need to get some supplies, but I need to figure out what they are first. If that works for you. Do you have anything else you want to mention? Anything else that I need to know before I go and work this out? Uh... I want you to check in the morning, make sure he's around, and I want you to check again later at night, just to confirm that he does go missing sometime tomorrow afternoon. We're gonna have to also check tomorrow morning, and that will narrow down the amount of time that it takes for him to actually go missing. It seems like you guys generally want to say, yep, okay, watch out for us, we're gonna watch out for us, um, and then you hug him, and tell him to stay safe and that you love him. You guys want to write down what you're going to do. Cool. Done. You tell Gerald, hey, is it cool if I make some coffee? Uh, do, do you need coffee? And he, he's going to say, I've already had some, but um, it might not be the worst idea. We should probably get a move on as soon as possible. You decide to do a real big jump. You just jump in place because that felt like the right thing to do. And then you say, cool, I'm going to go take a shower real quick after you start the coffee pot, I assume. Are you making the coffee or is he? Did you just go, someone, do, do you want coffee? And then just ignore 
his answer entirely and just sort of do that thing where it's like, man, someone should make coffee. Bye. Okay, we're making it. Good, cool, fine. So you, you start the coffee, you do a jump, then you go into the shower, you take a shower, you're less stinky now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change your wellness a little bit because I feel like that should probably go up again. I think I was improving it by 5, so I'm just going to make it a solid 35 this time. I'll make it go up 7 this time just because that jump and a hug, that just got you going. Uh, Gerald Reputation, let's make it go up to 60 because you made coffee, and that's good. A jump is good for the soul, you know? Just a good jump. All right, so anyway, um, and from there, it looks like Head to the Park has the most votes. So you get out of the shower, get your clothes on, and head out the door. Gerald heads out the door. Everyone's had coffee. We're going for that. So you make it over to the park. There's nothing really here. There's a gazebo. It's a small town street with the, you know, kind of normal Texas facades where there's just like, an entirely unrelated front to a building. You can kind of see it in this um, picture here. Um, the time is not accurate on that little clock thing. It's early morning, um, and um, there's a gazebo here. It has a threatening aura for no reason whatsoever. You guys are afraid of the weirdest shit. Can I just point that out? Like, when you first saw Noah, he straight up ate someone. He straight up ate someone whole, and you were like, Oh my god, is he single? Like, uh, is he seeing anyone? Because he could be seeing me. But you see an inanimate fucking building, and you're like, Shit. We're dead. We're fucked. That's what I need to do in the future. You know what? Next monster is just a fucking gazebo. That's what I'm doing. Next series, you're just going to be fighting a gazebo. That's the entire series. All right, well, now that you're at the gazebo, what would you like to do with yourselves? You've attempted to use your horticulture speed, uh, skill. Um, you've noticed that there are trees about. There's also grass. It's kind of a yellowish color. It is Texas. It continues to be grass. Do we have the materials to burn a gazebo? I don't think you do, no. Go into the gazebo and cast spells. Currently, the only spell that you really know is um, change the color of paper for a quick rundown on how spells work again. You can do pretty much anything, assuming you have the concentration and ability to pull it off. Large uh, world-ending spells have been mostly prevented via uh, a spell that was casted early on to prevent anything like that from destroying everything in existence. Can we mirror check the gazebo? Sure, let's go ahead and do that. Nothing out of the ordinary here. It continues to be the exact same gazebo that you've been seeing this entire time. It has not made any signs of aggression. It continues to be an inanimate, inanimate pile of wood. So you go into the gazebo. It's a normal gazebo. There's some, like, cobwebs up in the top of the gazebo. Um, it looks like it probably could use an actual, like, cleaning at some point. Um, there's what looks like the start of a mud dauber um, spot nest thing. Uh, maybe someone sprayed it down because you don't actually see any, like, mud daubers in there. But, like, you know, it could be wasps. No real way for you to know, but definitely something trying to make a nest in here the rest of the gazebo seems fine some of the paint is like chipping off in spots nothing outside the ordinary um it kind of just looks like it needs some tlc you just kind of stand in the gazebo for a minute and just sort of chill just have a good time hanging out in a gazebo it's fine it was probably used at some point for like cool like old timey band things you could probably put on like a whole like big band thing in a gazebo okay so uh go to the hotel and check on christopher befriend the gazebo lest you gain its ire go check on christopher or just jesus in general you just kind of check in with jesus you have a general feeling that jesus is a-okay and a pretty rad dude i guess if that's what you meant. Um, 
And then you decide that you're going to try and be friends with the gazebo, but becoming friends with someone is an act of constant work, you know? It's not just a, you know, one thing and then you're now friends. Like, you decided you're going to start putting some effort in trying to be friends with the gazebo. And it starts here today with a nice word and a nice thing to say. And you go... You're looking good today. I'm gonna go. Bye. And then you leave the gazebo with that nice little compliment just to make sure that it knows that it's respected and valued as a member of this this community. It's a little bit of a lie, but it's okay sometimes to lie to your friends because you want them to feel good, you know? You don't want them to feel bad. You don't want to be like, oh my god, you look like an ugly little slut, don't you? The gazebo has no opinion of you one way or another, as it is continuing to be a gazebo. Um, and you decide to go uh, to the motel to check on. I'm not going to add a gazebo reputation. You can't have a re reputation with a gazebo. You're going to try. You leave and head towards uh, the motel, making a certain amount of calm or caution to... Just make sure that you are not seen by the other you crossing the bridge towards the motel. You head to the motel. You don't see yourself. You must have spent a decent amount of time just having uh, a decent conversation with the gazebo. Hanging out with the gazebo. Getting to know the gazebo. And really just trying to have, like, you know, a good time with it. Hold on. A gazebo is considered garden furniture. Does that increase horticulture? No! Anyway, um, you head over to the motel. You still remember Christopher, uh, only because uh, Gerald reminded you that someone existed with that name. You don't know who that person is beyond the fact that that is someone that you were supposed to be remembering and don't have any idea who that is. Um, you're aware that you probably forgot someone this morning at some point between uh, last ses session and this one. You're now at the, uh, the motel, and you're here to go check on Christopher, the other Christopher, the one that runs the, the hotel, or motel. Mirror? There's no blood here. You go ahead and put away the mirror, uh, not seeing anything suspicious. Just straight up check on him? Okay. So you knock on the door to his, um, room. You're still wearing your... Abjure outfit, I would assume, unless if you guys say otherwise, you are uh, wearing a Zoo Pals um, plate over your face and a Home Depot robe attire. You are the least convincing person in disguise ever, but you also have mirror glasses on, so that way you can see behind yourself. We're cute. You knock on the door and Christopher shows up he says hey um you know what's <sighs> listen if you guys want to like come around here that's like one thing but like please don't please don't bug any of the patrons here we're trying we're trying to i'm trying to run a business here please don't bother anyone is there so i mean is there something i can help you with um, so generally speaking, you're going to try and play it cool and you're going to say Home Depot Sam wants to see you at the bank because of Financial reasons Home Depot 100% guarantee promise I'm, I'm glad you're okay, Zoo Depot he says, oh, okay, that's, that's weird that he didn't just call me. Um, I'll just call him. Um, thanks for letting me know. I'm gonna go deal with that now. All right. Bye. And then he, uh, closes the door. Leaving you outside in the parking lot again. To just kind of chill. You... Decide you're going to draw a symbol somewhere noticeable. 
Um, what do you have on your person that you could use to carve with? You could probably just find a decent sized rock. There's all those chalk rocks that are a thing. So you, you scream at the door, right? You scream at the door that you just saw Christopher go into. He said you had to sign some things, Home Depot. He pops back outside and he's holding the phone. Like, it's it's one of those old school corded phones. Um, clearly something that's been part of the, you know, motel's, you know, thing for a while. It says... I'm on hold right now. I'll get to it in just a minute. It's fine. Um, I, I'm taking care of it. Thank, thank you. Um, thank you for coming by. You, you can. Thank you. Uh, he he closes the door again and goes back in. You decide to go find a neat rock, one of those chalk rocks that kind of works. I don't know if this is. I think it's just a limestone rock. I think chalk rock is what kids call them. But here in Texas, there are rocks that, like, kind of work like chalk. It's just really crappy chalk. And you can draw on things. Mostly, like, concrete and stuff like that. But, uh, nothing, like, really... I don't know. It doesn't work as good as real chalk. But it, it'll work in a pinch. And this is something, as a Texan, that no would know. So you get one of those, and you start drawing a cool S thing. Like, on or around nose door. It probably wouldn't work on the door itself so you just draw it on the the floor like next to the door can we write 69 too cool yeah sure why not 69 and also that cool s thing you didn't you could afford real chalk you just didn't go and get any oh yeah nice with that you just sort of leave the rock you check to see if you remember that existing you don't and then you just go ahead and go, all right, well, I'm going to go check on Justin. And then uh, you leave. You head across the bridge towards the 7-Eleven. You're now at 7-Eleven. You look around for a minute to find Justin. He's uh, just kind of chilling behind the counter, doing what he normally does, which is not a lot. Um, because he's Justin is here. He's an actual zombie, if you're new to this series. And he works at the 7-Eleven. Um, he's given you incorrect change in the past and isn't much for talking. Um, can we do check journal and get signatures free action right now? Sure. So you ask him to sign off on all the people, you know, that he knows. He just kind of stares there, stares at you, kind of just looking at you. You check the mirror. You see Justin in the mirror and the rest of the 7-Eleven. He doesn't seem to have any sort of response as far as the signature thing goes. He just sort of just is there, chilling, hanging out with you, just being a Justin. You check the names in there. You don't know who the Christopher that is, uh, well, Crystalfer is the name that Chad has given them, uh, Crystal's boyfriend, um... You don't know who he is, but otherwise the exact same list of people you don't know. You ask him to slap the counter once if they're, you know, if he's doing good and twice if he's doing bad. He does neither. Uh, you go and buy a snack and ask Justin how about how he responds. What, what do you guys want as far as food? Can no buy alcohol? I don't know how old no is. I'll be honest. Our twin sister is married and having children. That's a good point. Y you're probably old enough. Late 20s sounds right to me. I mean, however old y'all want to be. Um, this is not particularly important in character creation. The top three are Slurpee, Chocolatey Milk, and Monster Energy Drink. Would you like to buy all of those? Combine them all to make the bad soup. 578 is the total for this. Is no lactose intolerant? I think, I think everyone is bad soup intolerant. I don't think you're supposed to drink the bad soup. What flavor of uh, Slurpee would you like? The the Coke isn't working. It's just kind of like watery. And like the, the when you like pull on it, it just goes... <laughs> like doesn't really give you an actual like... It's got the little red light on to let you know that it's not working. They got red. They got blue. They got Dr. Pepper. They got um, like coconut. Like that's a thing they do. 
And then obviously the coke, but it's not working right now because it never fucking works. Yeah, they've got coconut. That like pina colada. That's it. It's not coconut. So you mix a little bit of all of them together, including the coke. Why not? Why not? Uh, you've made something that is just fucking awful. You've, you know, gone into each one of Just a little bit each. You've got your Borden's Dutch chocolate milk one pint. You've got your, um, monster energy drink. And, uh, you are down $5.78. Um, let me go ahead and figure out the math on that one. You hand him the appropriate amount of money. He kind of fiddles with it for a bit and gives you back your change. Um, he gives you inaccurate change again, this time not in your favor. It's mostly pennies. You have a lot of pennies now. You drink some of the bad soup, you immediately regret your decisions in life and spit it out. Because even for someone like you, this is untenable. This is just not a drinkable combination that you've made. Your wellness goes down by five and you are unable to drink this. The bad soup is undrinkable. What do you mean by someone like you? I mean the kind of person who sits out in the parking lot and twerks and eats dirt. Anyway, you've got your like demon creation that you've made. Can thank you Justin just be a free action? Sure. Being courteous to uh customer service people is actually entirely free to do it costs you absolutely no energy or effort to be just a decent fucking human being so you go you just go into the bathroom it's just open and check the mirror in there there's no blood though there's like a bucket there's like a bucket right next to the the toilet and there's a mop in here it seems like it's doubling as like a storage room for some reason it's not a particularly good bucket there's like a sign for like an outdated like promo that is still here for some reason. The floor is damp and smells a bit like piss. Checking the mirror reveals nothing that you don't see normally. So you decide to store the soup for a weapon. Luckily you already have a container for it in that you're holding a, a Slurpee cup. So you just use that. You decide you're gonna go and try and ask uh, Noah about how to communicate with Justin. You head on over to the church, deciding that you want to spend some time trying to figure out how to communicate with Justin. That this might be able to give you some sort of understanding or some way to uh, talk with the guy. Um, also, you think you just committed a war crime in your stomach because you do not feel good. You kind of stand out inside the church for a minute and, I guess, knock on the door to see if you can get in. You're dressed up as um, Abjur still, so... Um, you have not met Noah as Abjur, if I recall correctly. Uh, you have no stats for that, so this would be a new thing for you. Uh, go to confession. Episcopal Church does not have confession because they figure that you can just have that conversation directly with God. And you don't need to have a minister to do that. However, if you do need additional assistance, if you just want to like have someone to talk to about like hard things you're going through, a religious leader so they, they can do that for you but it's not required in order to have a one-on-one -on -one with God to have a, a priest play uh, telephone with you it's starting to get later in the day and at some point today you do need to meet back up with Gerald um, and do a second visit to um, Christopher to make sure that he's okay probably before things go down as you were passing by randall's the entire parking lot was filled with home depot employees just absolutely swarmed with home depot employees uh entering and exiting the doors like flipping over like all of the the carts in the parking lot like just kind of just being weird you decide that you're gonna go in and talk to him but you're gonna pretend that you're a home depot employee and ask him what he thinks about no and uh compliment his horns and ask about justin you decide you're gonna go and try and find him just pretend to be someone else that happens to eat garbage you uh knock on the church a few times to see if there's anyone home and eventually there he is it's him this is oh hello um 
how are you doing today? He seems a little taken aback by the uh, Home Depot outfit, but uh, you compliment him on his horns, and you you say, Home Depot, those are nice horns you have. Home Depot. Uh, I have no branded stuff near me to copy the wording off of Home Depot. He says, um... Well, it's, it's nice to meet you. Um, I, I guess you work across the street. Um, can I help you? You say in response, How do you, uh, how do you talk to Justin? Home Depot. Um, 7-Eleven. It's heaven. Oh, um, he, you just sort of try and ask him about his day. He doesn't talk much, but, um, you know, uh, you have to work with him. He's, um, quiet. Um, you say, what do you think about no, where, not that I'm them or anything. Oh, thank heaven. For 7 Eleven. Home Depot. Noah kind of just looks at you for a minute. He goes, Well, um, they've only recently come to our community. They seem, um, like a nice person. Um, they mean very well, and they do seem to be incredibly devout. They seem like a good person um, at their heart. Um, why do you why do you ask? So you go Home Depot. They are looking to get a job with us. Eat free. Home Depot. They seem like a good candidate for a Clerk. Home Depot. Nothing runs like a deer. Would you be willing to be a character reference for them? They have no one in town that knows of them. Home Depot. Taste the meat, not the heat. Also, why would you, would, would you ma mind blessing this soup? Noah just kind of stares at you blankly. Not that he doesn't normally stare at you blankly. But, um... He says, well, um... I, I don't know, know particularly well. But, uh, from my interactions, they seem like they are, um... A very compassionate, nice, um, individual... Like I said, very devout. Um, they show up to, uh, they've showed up to service. Um, they are showing up again, um, and um, they, I, I, I think that they are are a very nice person, and I'm sure they're a very hard worker. Uh, I, I don't think I can, um, I don't think I can help you with that. Um, referring to the. Uh, the blessing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get back to work, but um, if if you would like, um, maybe we should arrange um, a uh, interfaith sort of um, thing. Maybe we can work something out so you guys can come and uh, talk about your religion. Uh, here, and we can be a little bit kinder to each other. How does that sound? You say, cool. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll send someone along to, uh, to, to further deal with that. No suggested that. Sounds great, Home Depot. You, you decide to, uh, to go ahead and leave him to the churchy things he has to get done. You say, thank you. 
and, and shake his hands and Jill never wash that hand again and then he goes back inside uh, to go about his work. You sniff your hand. Smells like soup. Mostly smells of soup. It's a bit it's a bit sticky from your soup. Um, but otherwise, it's fine. Go find Grandpa. Go check out that Home Depot rave. It seems like you guys are leaning more towards going and finding Gerald? I suppose on your way over, you can kind of take some looks at it. So you go ahead and um, start heading over towards the library and do just a, a quickie look at how things are going at the Randalls. Shit is just chaos in the, the parking lot. People are like immediate like going out one door with a cart and then immediately coming back into the store with the exact same cart like constant in and out of the uh the home depot employees they're doing a very very good job of distracting daryl so that way daryl does not have a chance to go and like check on his house at any point today so that way the other you has an option to just do all of the the breaking and entering that they need to. Um, they are doing a very good job at doing exactly what they were told. Uh, you continue heading towards the library and go ahead and head on inside. Looks like they're having a conversation. It's as quiet as Kevin allows any conversation to be when he's upset. He seems vaguely peeved, but Gerald is taking it in stride. Um, just kind of, um, listen. Now's not the time for this, and you know that. It's, um, there's a lot going on. Just check your Facebook friends. Do you know any of those people? Do you remember who these people in our, our, our group are? No, come over here. At the, the name of that, Kevin looks a little bit peeved at you. Hi. Um. Thank you for returning your books. It's a long story, but it's, this is... That happened a while ago. It's fine now. Listen. Do you believe that that spell would work? Well, um... If you think that's a good idea, we could do that. But I don't think it's a terribly great idea. Especially for someone who thinks that Fireball is just a little bit too much. Are you sure that's not too much for you Gerald seems like he's been having this conversation for a bit because he says okay I'm sorry in a appropriate dueling setting fireball if cast appropriately would be fine you can tell that like he doesn't actually really mean that, but he's actually just trying to get this conversation to, like, progress. Kevin seems to understand that, like, y'all are trying to, like, get somewhere with this. And just goes, If you want my approval on the spell, it's fine. Just make sure you have some containment for it and it'll be okay. I don't think it's a per terribly great idea. And I think you need to confirm that this is a thing that's happening in the first place. We've done that! I've shown you the proof. You know that people are going... missing. You decide that you're going to spend some time trying to figure out how to calm Kevin down. Uh, you compliment Kevin on his bow tie. You say, that bow tie looks very, very nice on you. Um... And, Gerald, calm down. We're in a library. We need to, you know, stay calm. But, hey. Let me show you this journal I've got. It's got proof of people who have gone missing. And it's got when people are going missing and where they're going when they go places. It should give you all the evidence that you need to know. Um, to, to believe what Gerald's been saying. Essentially. Um, Kevin seems a little taken aback that you, uh, you know, complimented his bow tie. He wasn't really ready for that one and seems a little bit, um, bashful about the whole thing. But he does take the journal and starts looking through it. 
Um, and you say, would you mind signing off on the people that you know as well uh, to do the whole get Kevin to sign thing uh, going? After a minute of him kind of flipping through it, looking through it, he kind of just sighs and he goes, Okay. Um, yeah, we can, um, we can work this out. Um, again, I think the only issue I have with your spell, Gerald, is that it needs to have some containment. Um, this proof is fairly satisfactory. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can confirm some of this information for myself, but um, I would like to say that it's probably fine. Did he blush? He's just all fuzz. I don't think you can see him blush if you were to do so. Good. We have an agreement. That's that's enough for me for now. I'm going to start working on um, some of the uh, more practical elements of it. Um, no. Uh, would you mind um, going and getting some things for me? We need some supplies. Um, do you have any idea exactly what we need, Kevin? Well, um, we probably need, um, I would think, uh, some sort of bucket, uh, tree stump remover, uh, fertilizer, uh, I'll try and get a few things myself, but if you can get those things, I don't think I have any of those. All right, um, I'm going to, uh, start hashing out the fine details of this spell with, um, Kevin here. If you don't mind going and getting those things, that would be great. Kevin did sign. We'll just say that Kevin did sign off on everything. Um, is no at Home Depot? You guys still have a little bit of time to, um, go do stuff prior to no leaving the house for Randall's and Home Depot. You decide you're going to go ahead and head out. Kevin goes ahead and says, go ahead and pick up a few buckets just in case. Um, I'm not entirely sure how much we'll need. Um, probably some rope as well. Ropes, tree stump remover, um, lighter fluid, fertilizer. That should work. Um, I'm going to go and investigate and see if you are actually in both locations at the same time. Gerald, go ahead and keep working on this. I'll, I'll uh, be back in just a moment. And with that, Kevin leaves um, as uh, you leave to go and check on the um, situation down at the Home Depot. It's been left open despite the fact that no one is here. Everyone's next door at the... Uh, Randall's still causing problems. Mirror check? Sure. You check the mirror. The amount of blood that you've seen in the Home Depot is still here. It's the same amount of blood as usual in the mirror. Is the Home Depot entity made out of light? No. It's made out of uh, flesh that you can't quite comprehend. Get what we need quickly before No gets here. Get the things he told us to get. Find a water gun, put the bad soup in. I'm going to go ahead and see what I can get. Uh, and you guys are just opting to just take this stuff because the Home Depot entity just doesn't care as long as it's part of your mission. And stack them and put them in a cart. There's no way you could reasonably carry this stuff. You're going to have to, like, put it in a cart and just walk out with it. So right now on the list, I've got bird seed, Super Soaker, Rifles and Pistols, Stump Remover, Fertilizer, 15 buckets, lighter fluid, rope, and uh, that's it right now. The bird seed is for y'all, not Raymond, apparently. Forget me not flowers. That's adorable. What's the other no doing right now? Given the time is either wrapping up the break-in or going to Randall's. All right, so it looks like you guys decide you want to get some uh, a garden gnome and some forget-me-nots and a battery-powered drill. And some common sense. You pick up some common sense and realize you can't find that here. You figured it out, though. The drills are, like, locked up, and you don't have the keys for it. What color are forget-me-nots? I actually don't know. 
I forgot what color they are. They come in kind of a, a baby blue and sort of a, a pastel pink. And it looks like they can also be white. So, like the flower color versions of the color palette of this game. That's weird. That's weird. Town of Nowhere compliant flowers found. That is actually awesome. Thank the cashier. You are the cashier. You're stealing this shit. Okay. Looks like you guys are good to just go. You go outside the, uh, the Home Depot and, uh, now it's time to kind of just figure out where you're going from here. You've got your Home Depot orange basket of stuff just filled to the brim with random crap that you're asked to buy and or steal. What time is it? It's getting late. Um, stream should be wrapping up soon and, um... As a result, no should be coming to the Home Depot soon as well. Go to the library. Uh, we're going to give the flowers to Kevin. Alright, cool. So we're going to the library then. You head on off to the library. You head into the uh, library. And uh, both Gerald and Kevin are there. Kevin comes back in around about the same time that you do. Um, nods at you and says, Well, I... Turns out that you're right. I saw you just coming back from, uh... Why did you break into his house? Was there a reason for that? That's a weird thing to do. I'm sure it made sense at the time. We don't really have time for that. Just, the, the proof is in the pudding that you believe that they, they, they actually were there. That's the important bit. That they were in both locations, which means that they are actually time traveling so the stuff they're saying is actually not as weird as it seems like all right uh it looks like you guys are saying it's our sister's husband she sent us a letter before she was forgotten we were looking for proof in his house you give them the stuff and the initial proof uh the initial break-in was because we he had proof that we weren't as crazy as we seem stealing food was an impulse Kevin just kind of looks at you, saying, I just stayed outside. I didn't see that you stole food, too. Why? Okay. No, just does stuff sometimes. They, 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 they just, it's fine. Um, give flowers to both Kevin and Gerald. So you give them both forget-me-nots and go, These are for you! What's the plan? Gerald looks at it and says, it seems fitting, thank you. Kevin, um, walks away for a bit and then comes back. There doesn't seem to be any particular reason that they did that, but now they're back and they don't make eye contact. Well, so your suggestion about doing a, um, a kill switch to let everyone know on Facebook when we were gone, it had me thinking. It seemed to work with, uh, the other Christopher, um, the one that we've now forgotten. Um, I think the best plan that I can come up with, and, um, Kevin seems to agree with my plan, and I don't want you to freak out, but, um, if we know approximately that Christopher is currently alive and goes missing sometime tomorrow, and that no one else seems to be living at the motel, that seems to be correct, yes? We could set up a similar sort of kill switch for a, um, device. With the motel being on the outskirts of town, we should be able to contain any sort of, um, collateral damage to prevent it from, um, uh, causing any problems. Presumably, the, um creature in question that's causing this to happen has to at least exist to some degree in a physical plane in order to be covered in blood in the first place, as you described. So in order for it to have attacked anything to begin with, um, it would have need to have, um, be there. So if we set a, um, I don't know if there's anything we can do to save Christopher, but, um, I think if we, I think if we set up a, um, 
a detonation device for the, um, to be set with a kill switch for Christopher. It should, um, it should put an end of this tomorrow. I know this is a crazy plan, but, um, it's the best one I've got. Um, if you have another plan, that would be good. Now would be a good time to know. If you don't have a better plan, that's fine. We have until tomorrow in order to figure this one out. There must be some way to save everybody who died. We just need more time to think. If we kill the bird, uh, we won't know why it killed my sister. Gerald says, I, I know you're upset. No, and I am too. This plan basically hinges on the fact that Christopher was destined to die. And I don't like that plan. I really don't like this plan. And I don't know if we'll ever find out what happened to your sister or why this happened. But at this point, I can't think of what else to do. If we can save anyone else. It's entirely possible that we're just under the influence of this being. It's entirely possible that we will be able to maybe work something out with the, the Home Depot entity. I don't like this plan. We don't even know if this will work. And we can always wait. But as you know, as you even said, more people will die. Or be taken, or forgotten, or whatever that entails. It's something to think about. We're going to, me and Kevin are going to work out how to make this work. But if you can think of something else to do, no. We have until after, well, tomorrow afternoon to find out a different plan. Gerald's plan as it stands is to use the kill switch spell that as soon as the spell itself forgets who Christopher, the guy who runs the motel, uh, is, um, would be to, uh, have that connected to a just shitty bomb that they've made out of Home Depot supplies and blow up the entire motel complex in order to just make sure the whole situation's dealt with. It worked with the other Christopher in that it, it was, uh, the spell that Gerald had this morning was to wake him up as soon as it did not remember who that was. And he woke up early this morning, indicating that it, uh, the other Christopher, um, died or was taken or whatever, forgotten this morning. Do binding spells exist in this universe? Binding as in something that holds something? That, that could be a thing. Sure. I would have to know the specifics of it, but yeah. As long as you can consider how to do it, particularly. At this point, uh, everyone kind of um, agrees to try and think of other ideas, but this is an idea for now.